Wow. Wow. Wow, this is this is some really deep stuff. I don't know what just happened, but something happened inside of me. Something snapped, something shook. I wasn't expecting that either. Ah, uh, <laughs> sorry. It's okay, it's all right. It's beautiful. <laughs> Monster is like really small, but it had to become that to stop me. And then the hurt child became present when you mentioned it. And I didn't realize this until now. There were things that I didn't remember yeah. until now. It's funny, I haven't seen that before. It, it feels like I'm the monster. I'm kind of seeing images of things. Of a, of a world where they can exist. This clarity brings all kinds of answers. It's clear. She like hugged me and then went back to her place, I guess, in my heart. Oh, it wants to come out. <laughs> it wants the bippity boppity boop Cinderella me. Like, <laughs> she's like melted into like my chest. It's like ooey gooey. Y'all week been finishing things, cleaning up more, started eating vegetables again last week. <laughs> and it kind of just started happening. It's almost like I just finished going through a meditation session. I feel like, like, you know, when you. When you hit that first joint, like in the morning, and you... I actually feel a lot more um, awake. Okay. Do you have any parts that you'd like to get to know better or change your relationship with? Um, so I think what comes up for me um, is a few pairs of kind of polarized parts and I'm not sure which one to go with. So um, one pair is sort of this, uh, like a dichotomy between this part of me that really yearns for um, having a romantic partner. Mm -hmm. And the other side of that is um, a part that says, just enjoy and accept your life as it is. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, and stop, you know, looking for something that you think is missing. Um, And then the other, and this is kind of unrelated, but probably somehow related, the other pair is kind of the believer and the detached, non-dual experiencer. Um, Some part that wants to believe that um, that the universe is like, you know, responding to how I'm thinking and mm-hmm. feeling mm-hmm. rather than this other piece that says that's silly. Um, you know, just yeah. life is what it is. Um, so hmm, I think, nice. I don't know if you have a curiosity about either of those pairs, mm. I'm happy to follow it. I'm curious about both of them. They both sound, um, um, I'll use the word rich. They sound like they, Mm -hmm. um, you know, that there's, that they've probably been there, been there for a while, I'm guessing. And that Mm -hmm. they're very, uh, deep or at least in the, the second pair philosophical. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. Um, I would say whichever, feels like it needs your attention the most. Um, When I was speaking about them, I have the most emotion around the part about the romantic stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. I guess we'll go with them. And I don't, I don't know if you want me to sort of zero in on one side or the other, or I know that we'll have to kind of pick, pick one to work with. And I guess the other one will have to, the other one will have to, (laughs) We'll hear from them both, (laughs) but yes, I mean, that that is, that is the way it goes usually is trying to target to one. Um, There there are ways of, of doing it where you invite both of them in if you're, if you're up for that. So that's possible too. 
Um, okay. I'm, I'm open to that. Uh, um, it'll yeah. be a little bit different than things I've done before. So, um, yeah. as I said, I've kind of explored a lot. I've done some of this work on my own, et cetera. Mm-hmm. So I'm open to something a little more complex. If that Great. Works. Are these two, are both of these parts, parts that you've met before and worked with on your own? Um, no, I have not done, um, any specific like IFS work with either of these. Um, but they've definitely, um, they're in there saying things often, <laughs> if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. So yearning for romance, romantic partner, and just enjoy and accepting life as it is. Right. And just kind of the, the one that says just enjoying accept life as it is, it's like, stop putting effort forward towards this. It's, mm-hmm. Yeah. It's, it's not quite, you need to give up, but it's just like, stop, stop expending energy. Okay. Yeah. Let's, uh, I vote that we focus on that one first. Okay. If that's right with you. That is perfectly fine with me. All right. So where do you notice it in or around your body? Yeah, um, I'm going to say that that question, I often don't have a lot of um, clarity around. Mm -hmm. Um, I feel like every time I do uh, work that has emotional intensity, the places in my body are the same. Um, It's often throat. Mm -hmm. Um, and this tension that's at the back of my eyeballs, like the muscles that move my eyes around are holding on too tight to my eyes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, sometimes jaw and eyebrows. So it's kind of a grouping of sensations that seems to always be the same. Um, no matter what, no matter what like emotional piece I'm puzzling with. Okay. Um, one way to just examine that is to maybe put yourself back in that place or you might even kind of consciously blend with the one who yearns for a romantic partner and you're mm-hmm. and you're kind of invoking this one that wants you to just stop trying and just mm-hmm. and just see look again to see mm-hmm. if you notice where that is or any other qualities about that that part could be color, vibration, energy, direction. Um, One thing I can say is that it it is a lot gentler than it used to be. Uh, It is fairly peaceful. It just, it seems to just want peace around that issue. Um, I think all that comes to me right now is, and a lot of times my parts are very animated and illustrated, Mm -hmm. interesting, but this, um, I can't seem to get a visual read on. It's just more of what it has to say and how it feels towards the other part. Um, okay. And how are you feeling towards it now? Towards the, um, the, the one wanting to stop trying. Um, how do I feel towards it? I feel welcoming towards it. Um, right. Not necessarily to say that I'm 100% buying into the notion, um, yeah. but there's nothing um, against it. Great. Great. Okay. So you said that one way that you notice it is through the messages it has for you, what it's saying. Mm-hmm. And we've heard a little bit of that. What else is it saying to you? Um, part of what it says is like, um, you know, like online dating and trying to like have these conversations with strangers and stuff is a pain in the ass. Mm-hmm. And um, adds to my overwhelm that's, mm-hmm. you know, generally just part of my existence as an adhd Um, And it's like, you know, why are, why are we putting forth energy to something that sometimes feels uninteresting? 
Um, and it does have like some feelings of, Oh, this is like hopeless or pointless, Mm -hmm. not hopeless. Um, not like, Oh, you're unlivable. And you know, this is never going to, it's just, um, it's tired of. Okay. Right. And that all makes sense to you. Mm Mm-hmm. That it would be tired of the effort. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Just let it know it makes sense to you. Another um, one of its messages is just like, there are so many existing relationships in my life that are more worthwhile mm-hmm. than this effort in that direction. Yeah. Okay. What's coming up for you now? What are you noticing? (sighs) Um, I'm noticing the throat Mm -hmm. feeling constricted, Mm -hmm. which is pretty much par for the course as i said anytime i do emotional work of any time of any kind it feels that way okay how do you feel about just welcoming that just welcoming that part that sensation yeah that sensation Mm -hmm. okay i'm gonna admit that yeah i don't welcome the sensation right I guess there's another part that's like tired of that. (laughs) That's tired of you not welcoming it? No, that is tired of it being the same. Or of that being how everything seems to show up. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And we certainly don't need to, to welcome it and get into that right now. Um. I don't mind doing that. Um, and I kind of as a blanket statement, um, Mm -hmm. how upset I sound is often turned up from how upset I feel. Um, so I kind of just want to say that just in case you, so you don't get too concerned. Um, it's just kind of like the response of my body when I'm feeling emotional is amplified. Okay. Um, I consider that kind of part of the emotional dysregulation piece of things. Sure. Um, so I'm okay to proceed in any direction, but okay. I will probably sound all crackly and <laughs> unsteady <laughs> okay. quite often. Yeah. Yeah. I think the, the key is just noticing it and mm-hmm. um, noticing any other parts that come up around it. So when the tightness comes in the, thro- the throat, is mm-hmm. there, are there other parts saying, you know, that are infuriated by that? Are there other parts that, are, that have sh- shame around that? Um, yeah. 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 There is definitely, and, and a, it's another kind of tired and frustrated feeling like, oh, I'm so right. tired of this response. Um, yeah. I'm tired of the turned up emotionality. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, there's definitely a very like eye rolling sort of part that (laughs) that responds to that. Okay. And the eye rolling part, well, what is its concern? I mean, obviously this is an uncomfortable feeling, right? And, and it's been happening for a while, but what else does the eye rolling part have to say about its concerns around this other part? I can only speak to that part's feeling towards the sensation Mm -hmm. because as I, as I said, um, anytime I do emotional work, it seems to show up in the throat. And Mm -hmm. so the part that is eye rolling about that is just like, Oh God, this again and still, and why always this? And, um, also very, um, it is the part that does not want to be, as emotional or have that kind of response. Yeah. 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 And what's his concern about if you were to be 
emotional and have that kind of response. I think it is about being perceived by others as being like dramatic and, Mm -hmm. you know, it's hard to manage. (laughs) Yeah. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. Great. You just let it know that makes sense to you. Okay. Okay. And we've, we've heard from a lot of parts. We can go in any direction that feels right for you, or we can stay with this part, you know, the eye rolling, the one that has this concern about you being hard to manage or dramatic and just mm-hmm. learn more about it since it's up, since it's up right now. Yeah. I think that seems, that seems like a good idea. Okay. Um, because this like turned up emotionality piece has been a big struggle for me. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, the piece that I rolls about it, um, it, kind of keeps that outwardly in check. Right. And how are you feeling towards that eye rolling part? I'm, I understand. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Yeah. And how do you feel about asking it more about what that would mean if, if you were dramatic or hard to manage? Like, what would be so bad about that? Um, It just is very invested in the idea of being seen as competent and, Mm -hmm. and just wants me to keep all of that stuff hidden. Yeah. Yeah. And how long has it been doing this job for you, protecting you in this way? As soon as you asked that question, the first answer was like, forever. <laughs> sure. <laughs> sure. Um, a long time, for mm-hmm. sure. I can't put an exact year or age there, yeah. but a long time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, just see if you can show it some appreciation for having that intention for working as hard as it has for such a long time. It's saying something about, um, because when I was younger, I used to listen to music um, a lot more than I do now. Mm -hmm. And it's having something to say about like, you know, this is why we had to take that away. (laughs) Okay. And are you all right just listening to what it has to show you about that?
Does that feel like it's connected to an age, the taking the music away? Not a specific age, but more just like, quote, adulthood. Yeah. Yeah, it's like, we don't have space or time for these big emotions. Yeah. There's a big piece of it around, um, like, you can't fall apart because you are a person who helps others heal. So Mm -hmm. you've got to, like, keep it together. Right, because if you fell apart, then you wouldn't be able to help them as much. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense to me. So it's really important for this part that you're able to show up for others. Yeah. And um, there's also a piece of it um, around being kind of the only person in my family to do any kind of healing work. Mm -hmm. So it's like, you know, I think it basically is just says like you have space for this inside the therapist's office and maybe on this phone call. And then, mm-hmm. and other than that, you know, you need to keep it under wraps. Yeah. 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 And it's kind of no, like, makes, okay, mm-hmm. yeah, it's, it's vibe is kind of like, look at all this shit I did for you. <laughs> right. Um, helping you to be like a confident, a competent caring professional and all of this. Right. Yeah. And do you see that? And do you appreciate it for that? yeah great yeah i also though appreciate that it allows enough of that to come Mm -hmm. through that i that my people whoever it is i'm caring for get that i'm empathetic um right yeah it doesn't it doesn't slam the door all the way shut yeah it's like Like, a valve yeah it needs to just be cracked just barely (laughs) Yeah. Um, yeah. <sighs> um, when you think about, or when this part thinks about falling apart, um, what's the emotion behind that? What is because I I know we've talked about, you know, the your voice, your throat getting tight, those kind of things. Mm-hmm. Is there more it can show you about the emotion there? The emotion that would be allowed out if it was allowed? <laughs> Is that what you mean? Yeah, well, yeah. If it didn't do its job, if you did fall apart, what is, <laughs> what's the feeling there? The words that come up are like despair. Okay. And just a hot mess, you know, like Mm -hmm. you would just be a fucking mess. Yeah. (laughs) I can't remember if it's okay to curse, but. (laughs) It's very okay. Okay. Yeah. And is the experience of being a hot mess, is that more like in the eyes of others or or in your own like how would how would you experience that um both um Mm -hmm. one would be in the perception of others the other would be this would take up too much bandwidth and Mm -hmm. um you're already you already struggle enough with overwhelm and task management things like that that right you just can't spend a bunch of time, you know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Slailing. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. I want to really respect that and make sure that we're we're hearing that because I don't I don't know. I don't know if IFS is can help you, right? I assume mm-hmm. it can. I assume it's yeah. good for everyone, but yeah. Um 
it has doing emotional work. Yeah. Or, or another way is to say is like, maybe you don't have the bandwidth. There are people who don't have the bandwidth at this time, mm-hmm. you know, whatever is going on in their lives to do emotional work. And so it's really important to, you know, respect these parts and make sure that we're really understanding what it's about. Yeah. Um, I think my, my response to that is wanting to show it all of the work, you know, to remind mm-hmm. it of all of the work that I have done, am yeah. doing, continue to do, and I'm sure. not, you know, in shambles. <laughs> yeah. If that's coming from a place of self, then... Yeah. And it feels it's right. Go for it. It's not defensive. It's, you know, right, it's just, right. Hey, but what about this and that and the other? It's mm-hmm. <laughs> like, it's been okay. Yeah. Um, I do feel a, a softening of that throat feeling mm-hmm. um, with that bit of exchange with it. Right. Yeah. And what does it think about your work? in the past, your, your work from self energy. Mm. It acknowledges, um, it acknowledges the depth of that and Mm -hmm. that, um, it acknowledges that it has indeed improved my existence, if you will. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Great. The part that has the despair, I'm assuming that's kind of exile, exile energy. Mm -hmm. Have you worked with that part before? Um, I've definitely worked with some parts that have despair. Um, Mm -hmm. Don't know if it's the specific one that's, you know, spoke during that moment in this conversation. Mm -hmm. And what does this eye rolling part, what does it need from you going forward in this work or in your relationship with it? The first words that came are, uh, the first word that came was patience. Um, I think because I tend to want to just like mm, dive headfirst into everything and Mm -hmm. um, get a little bit consumed with things that I'm interested in, including this type of work. Um, Yeah, there was something that I don't know if I'm going to be taking us off on a tangent here, which I'm really good at doing. Um, but there was something that came up in my last therapy session. There was like a critical piece that was um, pointing out that I'd been inconsistent with doing my own IFS work. Um, okay. And I think, I don't know if this part is the same as that or if they have, you know, similar views, but it's like, you don't have to... It doesn't have to be like constant. Right. Yes. Meaning like if you don't do any of this for a week, it doesn't mean that this is going to fall away like so many other interests have. Um, Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah, it's good to look out for and to... to figure out what is the right pace. Mm-hmm. So you can think that part that's yeah. concerned about going too hard or. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, you know, there for a minute, I, I was absolutely um, intent and convinced that I must be doing this every day. Mm-hmm. And I think that is perhaps just a little bit too high of an expectation. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Um, so I think that's what it's asking for is just, you know, 
it's okay to have a moderate pace sometimes. Yeah. With and I'm that. just curious when it, when you talk about doing this every day, what particularly trying to, what that sounds, trying that to sounds like too in, much. Trying to mm-hmm. check in with carts and, and trying to, it was, it was like, um, it was just another thing to, to judge, not, not getting done, you know, right. like, Oh, you know, you didn't do, you didn't do what you said you were going to do. You were going to do this every day and you didn't do it. Right. Right. Um, so I think this piece that's eye rolling at the emotional stuff might be saying like, you know, you don't have to be an intensity junkie. <laughs> mm. um, mm-hmm. It's okay to, to not be digging around in your heart every single day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. Like there's a refractory period of sorts sometimes. Sure. sure. Great. And you're feeling good about, you know, learning that and understanding yeah. that about it. Yeah. I think it just gives me, um, it gives me perspective in, in saying like, that's another part that is always trying to, you know, create um, these sort of rigid expectations around routine that I never <laughs> live up to. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, I get, yeah, I get the, the message. Part. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Is there more that you want to learn about this part, share with it, brainstorm with it? Mm. I feel like I've kind of lost, I've kind of lost the proximity um, right now. I think that that was its big message. It's just like, you know, I don't need to uh, pressure myself to do this kind of work every single day. And I think that mm. might have been all it needed to say for now. Yeah. Wise part in such good timing, you know, to establish that we're working with me, especially it's like this is our first conversation. Mm-hmm. And yeah, sometimes I feel like that's that's something that doesn't come up until the sixth conversation when, <laughs> you know, we're wishing it had come up originally of like, wait, what's the pace here? What's, mm-hmm. what's the expectation of parts and yeah. the relationship? Okay. Well, shall we continue? Shall we go back to some of these other parts or? Yeah, that sounds good. Okay. I think the eye rolling is over <laughs> for the moment. Okay. I want to make sure we're not just dismissing you know, dismissing it. If like, yeah. okay, it's fine. Well, so now we can ignore it. No, I, I think it, it just, that was its big uh, message today. I think Great. just like, don't, you know, maybe, maybe because I'm having this conversation with you, it's, it's kind of getting this notion like, oh, she's gonna, <laughs> get back on that agenda again, you know, Mm -hmm. like, Oh, now I have to do this every day. Um, so I think that was it. I think it kind of walked out of the room and I I lost the proximity to it. Okay. So I'm rewinding here in some of these notes. Okay. Okay. Um, should we get back to the part that says stop trying with online dating it's overwhelming sure that kind of part yeah it's it's up to you if there are any other parts that sound like they need your attention more that one that one seems like a good one okay i've been kind of um hiatus from putting any effort into any of that for Mm -hmm. um since around the holidays um Mm -hmm. and i think that part is it feels satisfied around that. It's like, oh yeah, finally a break from, you know, assessing these 
you know, two dimensional people, <laughs> not that they are, mm-hmm. you know, you know, yeah, like, I, I get it. Yeah. It's like, oh, I'm just, it, it was just fed up with that taking up any space in an already um, busy mind and heart. Yeah. Yeah. One of the last things that we heard from it was it was saying how you have so many existing relationships and that your effort there feels like it could be worth more than effort in this other direction. Yeah. Yeah, my friends, my family, my colleagues, all of that um, Mm -hmm. for this part feels more rewarding. Mm -hmm. Even my cat, you know. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, just sit here on the couch and and pet the cat. Don't, um, you know, feel like you need to Put forth, the, put forth this effort. Right. Right. Yeah. <sighs> Maybe we can learn more about its concerns about if you were to put forth that effort, if um, yeah, if you did go that other direction. I think that um, what it pushes back against is um, having that be any kind of priority over mm-hmm. over like things that are tangibly present. Yes. Yeah. Or um, it's kind of like the other part. It's like, um, it'd be fine to put forth some effort, but let it be um, spaced out and Mm -hmm. not like you're like digging for a needle in a haystack kind of feeling. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. So so it would like to, it's saying if you were to engage in that to, find a way to make it easier or have more space doing it. Yeah. Um, But it just, it does just have this kind of, it's sort of a different sort of eye rolling kind of feeling of, uh, you know, do we really have to (laughs) message these strangers or (laughs) stuff like that? Yeah. Yeah. It's just, you know, it's, it's wholly unimpressed with that activity, I guess. Okay. (laughs) And how are you, how do you respond to that when it when it has that its own eye rolling reaction? I I um, definitely can appreciate that for sure. Okay, and I appreciate the um, reminders that like there's so much that is here already. Yeah. 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 It has been peaceful to dismiss it for a little while. The yearning? Yeah, to just, or yeah, to just be like, I am not bothering with that today. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Um, It just gives me a little bit of, you know, more space to think or feel about other things. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, I get the, I definitely get the message and I appreciate the sentiment, if you will. Mm -hmm. Is there more you want to get to know about this part or is there a way of changing, updating the relationship that you would like to negotiate with it? Um, I think what I would want to communicate to it is that I I um I think I already communicated that I appreciated its input. Um, what do I want to 
to communicate it. I lost my train of thought there, which does happen a lot. The reason I asked is because it sounds kind of like you and this part are in a pretty okay place. Like, yeah, yeah. It's right not, now, especially because, like I said, I've been following its advice. <laughs> right, right. For a few months now. Yeah. And it has been good. Mm-hmm. I I do um, acknowledge that it has felt relaxing and relieving to just to just set that aside. Yeah. And then, of course, there's the other part that's like, but, 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 but. Yeah. <laughs> I still want this. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I have time if you would like to learn more about that other part that's saying, but, but, but. Yeah. Okay. I don't, I don't want to push you if it feels like we're going too fast. So just no. check in with these parts. No, it's, it's good. Okay. So, I'm just going to take a moment to kind yeah, of get consent please. from the two that we were talking to recently Great. or, you know, just now and just. Okay. We're good. Okay. So this other part, mm-hmm. how do you notice it when it comes up in your body? Um, there's the throat feeling as usual. Um, and right now there's kind of a very dull ache at the very base of my skull. Okay. And how do you feel towards it? I'm very compassionate towards it. I'm also <laughs> the other feeling towards it that's coming up is like, really not in the chest. <laughs> like, that's not where you hang out. You would think, you know, that it would be hanging is out. Is that because you've? Mm-hmm. Is that because you felt it there before, or just an assumption? No, because you know, metaphorically speaking, it would seem that the yearning for uh, romantic partnerships would live in your chest. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah. Sure. Um, but that I'm not feeling much there. It's all. It's always throat. Always. Always. And then that. Um, base of the skull so um, all right yeah surprise i'm just like oh okay Mm -hmm. that's surprising it's great then it's not something you're learning about it Mm -hmm. okay okay so let it know you have that compassion for it and Mm -hmm. ask it what it wants you to know It wants me to know that it knows it's overwhelming at times. And it wants me to know that um, that it is quite certain that what it wants is a good thing. Yes. Mm-hmm. And how do you respond hearing that from it? Um, I agree, but there's also this wanting it to be less intense. Okay. And what are its concerns around if it weren't, if it wasn't as intense, what's, what's it afraid would happen? That it wouldn't get what it wants. <laughs> right. Yeah. That I would successfully um, fill up my life with everything else. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Just let it know that makes sense to you, that you understand 
why it feels the need to be so intense. Yeah. Just see what else you notice about it, what else it wants to share with you. Okay. Um, <laughs> um, one of the things it wants to say is like, you know, come on, who are you joking? Like you, you do like intensity, don't you? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> uh, which is true. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, Part you of know, you loves intensity and we've met some parts that don't. Yeah. And they're telling like, you to slow down. Boring. Um, right. Which is also true. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, so that could be even another job it has for you or another job it does for you is keep you from being bored that is definitely yes please check the box mm -hmm. <laughs> um I think it also wants me to know that that it is partly responsible for all of the um, good other relationships that I have. Okay. Yeah. And that I'm I'm capable of carrying intensity. Mm. When you say carrying, you mean like handling its intensity, or you mean staying staying on the job without it nagging you? I think what I'm what I'm meaning or what it is saying is <laughs> basically like you've always been kind of intense internally and you know nothing catastrophic has come of that so like what's the problem why can't we be intense right right and how do you respond to that yeah i am <laughs> my response is like yep not boring <laughs> like for sure right right um yeah um i'm gonna admit also that i feel like i'm just kind of skirting around um the most hurt feelings of this part right i think it just wants me to know that um oh. Still, yeah, that like it wants what it wants and it's not going to stop wanting it. And and that's that. <laughs> yeah. And does that encompass the, the most hurt? <sighs> the hurt is just well, the, the wanting? Is, the hurt is the not, not getting what it wants. Uh-huh. Um, some of the hurt is, um, is around, uh, the inability of some people that it has, you know, taken into its heart that, um, couldn't show up. Mm -hmm. Um, because of their own limitations. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
So it has the heart of if it if it's doesn't get what it wants, but it also has the heart of when it has maybe thought it got what it wanted and then <laughs> others aren't showing up for it. Yeah. Yeah. Um one of the things that it kind of cries out is like why are people so broken? Sounds like it has a lot of grief around that. Yeah. Yeah. You okay being with that now? Yeah. <sighs> There's like a word mincing part that comes in and it's like, people aren't broken, you know, <laughs> blah, blah, blah. Um, but I'm sure, okay. Sure. Yeah, I'm okay with being with that feeling. All right. Of like. <sighs> I think a lot of its hurt is. Yeah, you know, like you said, you know, it kind of at various times in my life has found um, the connection that it's seeking. Mm-hmm. But as I said, um, sometimes with a person that could not um, fully show up, you know, or yeah, yeah it has wanted to connect with people who can't let their armor down. Yeah. And so what does that mean for this part when others don't show up? It means that it is alone. That it's alone. <laughs> yeah. It means also um, that this part and its intensity and its enthusiasm um, are inconvenient right. to others. Yeah. I get that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, there's like this sort of feeling that other people sometimes are like, oh, why do you have to be so intense? And mm-hmm. this part is like, because intensity is rich and thick and fantastic. <laughs> right. Yeah. What's the alternative, right? Yeah. Boring and, and flat, right? Kind of flat. Mm-hmm. Closed off, you know. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's just like, hey, I'm fun. I'm enthusiastic. I <laughs> am intense. Right. And um, and yet this, there's pain that's being yeah. provoked or buttons being pushed in you of yeah. a feeling of being alone, feelings of grief around how others are broken. Yeah. And just all that hurt that would go along with not getting what it wants. Yeah. And I think part of it is it's not as it's, you know, the feeling that other people are broken, but it's also the feeling that the world is breaking people. Yeah. That... (sighs) that like humans in general haven't figured out how not to do that. Right. Society and, you know, all this stuff yeah. that causes people to show up yeah. in a closed off or guarded way. Um, yeah. Just really sad. Yeah. And how are you responding <laughs> as you learn all this from it I'm kind of impressed honestly (laughs) yeah yeah just with what a good uh, picture it has yeah an understanding that it has yeah 
Yeah, I mean, it's not brand new information to me, but right, like I'm, I'm aware of these, of this feeling. Like, wow, man, human beings could have done a better job. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know, like how long have we been around, and this is how far we've gotten, um, right? In learning to to love one another and to show up in, in an authentic way. Yeah. Yeah. I guess um, the notion isn't new, but I didn't realize it was so connected to this part. This right. like part that sometimes to me feels desperate, right. which is like one of my least favorite feelings. <laughs> right, I'm, sure right. no one, I'm sure no one likes it very much, but um, um there's just like a depth of uh, caring, and I don't know. Right. I, There's I can, more than just that simple desperation or yeah, clinging feeling. Yeah. <sighs> um. If we were to learn about the exile that this part protects, Mm -hmm. just to try to identify or figure out what direction that would be, do you have a good sense of that? What this part protects, what that part is like? Mm -hmm. The words that come up um, come from some of my experiences in therapy. the what the phrase that pops into my mind is the inconvenient child like the too much child mm-hmm. does that inconvenient child feeling does that also connect with the feeling of despair yeah okay yeah and if you could heal that part so that it didn't feel inconvenient and in despair um can this protector see what like what that would look like or how that might help it And I think I need to ask clarity on protector, meaning what protector are we talking about? Okay. So, this, <laughs> so I was considering this protector of uh, being the one that has the, wants the romantic partner. Okay. Protector. I don't know how else to describe it, but we can okay. see that it's, it has these concerns about you know, painful feelings it's trying to keep away. It's okay. doing, it sounds like it's doing battle with other parts. And it has a, it has a very outward facing kind of, you know, it shows up in the world. It, it wants to, uh, it's fun. It's enthusiastic and it wants to put that out there. So, <laughs> okay. You know, those, those yeah. sound like protector qualities to me. Okay. Um, I guess I was seeing the, um, sort of emotional intensity part more as the exile then. And then I was seeing the eye roller and the like, keep it under wrap ones as the protectors. Um, Yeah. And I could be very well wrong. There also could be a lot of overlap where, well, this part, you know, this protector is exiling this part, but it, Mm -hmm. but it's kind of a protector itself and it's exiling another part. So Okay. Um, I might ask to, to distinguish, you know, when you think about the the strongest uh, emotional aspect or the most, um, I don't know how to say it, exile um, you know, is it that what we talked about, the despair, the, the child who's too much, um. is that the same as this part that wants a romantic partner. 
I kind of feel like it is. Okay. From what I can discern, um, that it is, you know, like the child that shows up all intense and enthusiastic and whatnot. And then Mm -hmm. is kind of met with, um, Oh uh, yeah, like folks that can't quite okay. show up fully, or okay, I just don't get it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, could be. Either way, it sounds like you've learned a lot about both of these parts. Yeah, I mean, you've made an you've made some. I don't know, agreements or negotiated with the, the eye rolling, the, the one setting the pace. Mm-hmm. And then this other one that says, stop trying with the romantic stuff. Um, mm-hmm. Learned about that. And then this part, all this depth around. It's just the part that wants love. Yeah. Yeah. So assuming, let's say we're bringing this conversation to a close okay. for the sake of time. Yes. Where would you, where would you like to go with this part in the future? Or is there something you want to negotiate with it now about how to work with it? Um, I think that what I'm getting is like more of a message from it to me, which is, it's okay to take breaks, um, but it's not okay to give up. Not okay to give up? Yeah. Yeah. Like accepting accepting your life and as it is doesn't mean dismissing this desire. Right. Yeah, I guess what it seems to be saying is like, there's a balance to be struck. Mm -hmm. Um, It's not an either or kind of binary voice. Right. Of like, you know, put forth effort or give up. (laughs) Yeah. You can um, lessen or you can take breaks or whatever. Yeah. And it's talking about the desire that it has and the project of finding a romantic partner. Yeah. Or at least Um, even, even connecting to the desire of, of that. Yeah. Well, that's actually what I was going to suggest is um, just to see how it likes the idea of you saying, of you saying, you know, how about not giving up on your relationship with it, you're connecting with it. Ooh, I like that. And just see if it, how it likes it. Yeah. And what you mean by that is that I'm basically conveying to it that, that I am going to have a relationship with it. Is that what you mean? Right. Right. <laughs> Yeah, that works. <laughs> that works. Yeah. Good thing, because that's yeah. all that I feel competent in helping anybody. <laughs> no, that sounds good. Yeah. 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 In fact, when the when the external relationship stuff comes up, I'm off. I'm often like, I don't. I don't know. Yeah. You know, I, but if 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 you can make the commitment to be with the part. Yeah. Then it can it doesn't, feel it, love. It can feel that love or some love. Um, And I think that's what self-leadership is all about is, you know, these, like, regardless of what our external circumstances are in our external relationships, we have all these internal relationships that we're stuck with no matter what. Yeah. So that's, that's really all that I feel confident in (laughs) negotiating, you Uh know? Yeah. Yeah. So it doesn't, it doesn't mean that. Therefore, we should all just 
be alone and be happy doing nothing or <laughs> not form relationships. Right, right. But it's just a, it's just a focusing on those relationships. Yeah. That makes sense. And it feels like uh, when I said that to it, it felt like a, a relief, like, oh, cool. You know, you're not going to try to um, quiet me or um, right. kind of push me into the corner. Right. Yeah. If If it has or if any parts have that feeling of being too much. And you know, they they have the feeling of being too much for others. And who knows? Like you said, maybe, maybe the world is fucked. Maybe these people are all broken <laughs> and they are too much for them, but, but they don't have to be too much for you. Yeah. I don't mean to say that the world is totally fucked and that everyone's yeah. broken. It's just like, oh, you know, there have been times where, you know, you just see another person's inability to... Yeah. to kind of go there um, as sort of tragic. It is. Yeah. And I think that we're fighting the good fight here. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. It's nice meeting you. You too. Okay. Talk to you next time. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Bye. Do you want to help bring more self-energy to the world? If you'd like to participate in calls or help out with this project in any way, I'd love to hear your ideas. Join the Discord server or contact me at james at liveifs.com. A huge thanks to our audio engineer, Ivan, for your care and diligence in editing the calls. To every caller for your courage in sharing some of your parts. And to anyone out there getting to know their internal system, keep going. Who knows, that might be the most selfless, helpful thing you can do for others, and you're the only one who can do it. If you'd like to see us reach the largest audience, we must please the almighty suggestion algorithms at iTunes and YouTube. And they don't care about the power of IFS. They're looking for likes and shares and comments, and the sooner the better. Follow the links in the show notes right here in your podcast player to make your wishes known. And now, a minute of meditation. Or if you prefer, pull over. You can do it in 60 seconds. Just click one of those links. They're right there. And give us a like or a five-star rating. It would really help. If you think this project is helping people, you're helping people by sharing it. Thank you.